Welcome everyone. My name is Sharon and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. In a few moments, we're going to hear a great message. But before we do, we're going to worship God through our tithes and offering. Your generosity makes it possible so that as a church, we can continue to support the 22 faith-based ministries and community organizations that help the disadvantaged and those in need, both in our local community and around the world. Your investment in God's work to reach, heal, and transform the broken and hurting is making an eternal difference in the lives of others and their families. So thank you, New Hope Winward, for your continued faithfulness in giving. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate, or you can scan the QR code. Also, by clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website, where you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, as your people in church, you call us to actively model your heart of compassion for others with a spirit of generosity. So it is with that mind and heart set, we readily and willingly give of our tithes and offering so that you can use it to make an eternal difference in the lives of the broken and hurting. We partner together with you and your church to reach and transform lives for your kingdom. It is in your name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited that you're here for service. We have a special welcome gift for you. It's a New Hope Windward stainless steel tumbler. Simply stop by guest services in the lobby after service to pick one up, or you can text the word NEW to 808-736-3777 and we'll mail you a tumbler as our way of saying, welcome to New Hope. We'd love to stay connected with you this week. The easiest way to do that is by following us on social media. Well, today we have a great message. Would you join me in welcoming Pastor Dave. Good morning, everybody. Oh, happy new year. It is so good to see you all. And, you know, if you're new here and we haven't met, my name is Dave. I'm one of the pastors on the team. I'm so, so glad that you're with us. Uh, we are one church that meets in multiple locations. So I always like to start the message by talking to everybody on the other side of the camera. So to all of you amazing men and women at the Correctional Centers, we love you. We pray for you. We believe in you. I want to say hi to everybody here at our Regal Cinema Theaters, everybody at Ann Pearl, everybody at the Plaza, everybody at Online. Uh, we are so, so thankful that you're joining us on uh, in this new year. And uh, you're not in my eyesight, but you're in my heart and you're in my, you're in my prayers. And I love you. I truly love you. And I believe in God's best for you in this new year. And, um, you know, I also want to give a special welcome to every person who's new to our church since our Christmas services. We had a lot of first time guests uh, because you did such a great job inviting people. Get this. We had 3,280 people who attended our Christmas services online or in person. And so great job with that, everybody. It's awesome. I'm so proud of you for caring about people. And if you're one of the new people, we're just so honored that you're back with us and we're glad that you're along for the ride. So church family, let's do what we do. Let's welcome everybody at all of our locations right now. Aloha everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, now, to all of you who are online, um, if you're watching online for health reasons because you're uh, a high risk or you're caring for somebody or you're sick or you're traveling, I totally get that and I totally support you. Uh, that's what church online is for. Um, now, if you're watching online out of habit reasons because it's become convenient, I want to encourage you to come back to church. And here's why. First of all, I mean, one reason the scripture commands us to worship together and to not get in the habit of not gathering, but th there's just something that happens when God's people get together in the room. And, and almost every Sunday, somebody comes up to me in the lobby after service and they say, we've been watching online, but we're back in person. And man, it's just so much better to be here in person at Regal Cinemas. And why is that? It's because when we worship together, when we pray together, when, when we hear God's word together, you know what happens? God shows up in more ways. It's just better. And so I invite you back to, to church. We'd love to have you back. And there couldn't be a better time for you to come back to church than now because we're launching a brand new series called Joyful. 
And over the next five weeks, we're going to teach you from God's word how you and I can be more full of joy in this new year. I am super excited about it because when you have joy on the inside, I'm talking about joy that wells up from the Holy Spirit inside of you. Then no matter what you go through, you've got this joy, you've got this peace from God. It's something that happens on the inside, and we're going to teach you how to do that. Now, the, the title of today's message is this, and it's called Anxious for Nothing. And the reason why is that our worries, our anxieties, steal God's joy. They steal God's peace. And so we're going to learn from scriptures how we can combat that and experience more joy and peace in this new year. Now, this is super important because mental health experts have identified hundreds of fears that people have that cause them anxiety. I want you to see if you know what these phobias are. And by the way, I'm not making any of these up. These are legitimate classified phobias from mental health experts. The first one is called dental phobia. What do you think that is? Fear of going to the dentist. Very good. All right, here's the next one. Uh, Ablutophobia. You know what that one is? That is the fear of bathing. And the person next to you hopes you don't have this fear. <laughs> All right, the next fear, again, not making this up, pentherophobia. You know what this is? This is the fear of your mother-in-law. <laughs> How many of you got a fear of your mother-in-law? <laughs> I hope she didn't see you raise your hand. <laughs> but she's probably like, you better fear me. <laughs> All right, and then here's one. Uh, this one's called palatophobia. Do you know what that is? This is the fear of balding or of balding people. And Pastor TJ hopes you don't have this phobia. <laughs> and then here's the last one I'll share today. Howly pastophobia. <laughs> you better not have this fear. <laughs> But isn't it true that there are just some things that cause us fear and anxiety? I mean, some things just, just get us anxious at times. And I read some interesting research this week that said that anxiety is the number one health issue reported by uh, women. And whoop, boy, let me go back. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay. No look at the screen right now, okay? It's not there. All right. The, 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 what the slide said was this. Anxiety is the number one health issue among women. And researchers say anxiety is the number two health issue among men behind drugs and alcohol. Now, uh, personally, I think anxiety is number one for many men. And, and I just think us guys have a harder time admitting it. You know, it, it, it's like we, we like to act like, no, I don't worry about anything. Because we feel shame if, and weakness if we say, I feel anxious and worried. But the reality is a lot of us men get anxious as well. Um, in a recent study by Pew Research, they surveyed the top problems that teens see among their peers. So they're asking all these teens, hey, what are the top issues you see among your peers? And 70% identified anxiety and depression as the number one problem they see among their peers. In other words, there's a lot of anxious teenagers these days. But it's not just teens that are anxious and worried. Uh, in a recent study that was completed, uh, researchers say that the most anxious nation in the world is, you guessed it, the United States of America. In the US, we get the gold medal for anxiety compared to other nations. In fact, the study said that when people from third world countries move to the United States, they become more anxious. Why is that? Anxiety is contagious. It really is. Anxiety and fear is contagious. So I want to just say this. If you've been stressed, if you've been anxious, you need to know this. You are not alone. And let me tell you, I get it. I have had my own struggles with anxiety and fears. And get this, even Jesus got anxious. God in the flesh, God in a bod got anxious. Where? He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was waiting the hours ahead of him. He was praying, awaiting the time that he was going to be crucified and horrifically tortured to pay for the sins of the world. And it says he was so anxious, he sweat drops of blood. 
Even Jesus got anxious. So again, uh, if, if you are anxious at times, if you worry, you are normal, you are human. And, and I think that's important because sometimes other Christians will make you feel like something's wrong with you if you have anxieties from time to time or worries. They say, you know, God's the Prince of Peace. Why don't you just have more of the Prince of Peace? And it's like, that is true. He is the Prince of Peace. But anxieties and worries are a part of life. And I, I wanted to add here that for some, anxieties come from uh, genetic issues, uh, generalized anxiety disorders, sometimes chemical imbalances in the brain, uh, from depression, and, and other causes. So sometimes our anxiety is, a, is physically related in its cause. And if that's you, I just want to emphasize the importance of a few things. One is nutrition, exercise, um, therapy in some cases. Uh, I think in some cases, consulting a medical profession, professional to best ascertain a solution for your anxiety can be helpful for many. And there's no shame in that. There's no shame. Because sometimes, my friends, our brains get ill, just like our bodies do. Sometimes our, our brains get imbalanced with neurotransmitters that can cause us higher levels of anxiety. Now, I'm not saying, well, just medicate. I'm saying seek professional help, pray about it, let God lead you. There's some amazing supplements, amino acids, and, and minerals and things out there. There's so many holistic approaches, and there's also some medical ones for those who are in need of that. So if you need help, my point is this, no shame, get it. But anxiety is not just a physical issue, isn't that right? It's, all, it's also a spiritual issue. So what I want to do is give you a roadmap from Philippians 4 that gives gives us some steps to moving from our worries to God's peace and joy. Now, if you've been around church or you've read the Bible, you've probably heard these verses before, but here's what I've learned. These verses are a lot harder to do when you're anxious. In fact, we often do the exact opposite of what God says to do when we're anxious. So let's review it because these steps are unnatural when we're stressing out. So let me give you the context of the passage of Philippians 4. Um, the book of Philippians is called a prison letter or a prison epistle because Paul wrote it from prison. And the prisons of those days were nothing like the prisons of today. Paul was in a dungeon. He was underground, no windows. It was dark, it was dank. He had been tortured. He's probably still bleeding. And get this, he's awaiting execution to be beheaded, why? For preaching about Jesus. Now, if that were you, would you be anxious? I would be. But it was in this desperate spot that Paul writes these words and these steps to having more joy and peace. Here's what he says. We're going to go verse by verse. Verse 4 and 5. Always be, say it with me, always be full of joy in the Lord. How often? Always. always. What? <laughs> like when I'm stressed, be full of joy? Mm-hmm. How? You rejoice in the Lord. And Paul says, hey, if you miss that, I'm going to say it again. Rejoice. And he says, let everyone see that you're considered and all that you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. 27 times in, in the book of Philippians, in this letter, Paul mentions the word rejoice or joy in prison. And God, what he's saying is that God's joy is available for you even in the worst circumstances of your life. Because it comes from God, from his spirit inside of you. So Paul says, hey, listen, New Hope, Dave, be intentional this year to be full of joy. He says you have to choose to rejoice, to rejoy up. That, that joy is a choice. A lot of people think that joy is just a feeling, but joy scripturally is far more than a feeling. It is, here it is, it's a lifestyle where you and I choose to rejoice in the Lord. And we're going to teach you how to do that over the next few weeks because joy is a choice. Um, and so we'll teach you that. So then Paul gives a huge key to how we can rejoy, re-up on our joy. And he says this. He says, say it with me, don't be anxious about anything. anything. <laughs> and when you first read this, you're like, is that what he really meant? Like, Paul, are you saying, like, if I get the news that I have cancer, don't be anxious about that? This is not what he meant. <clears throat> Let me explain this. 
In the Greek words used here, they're written in the present active tense. And what he's saying is this, catch this. He's saying, don't live in a continual state of anxiety. Don't live in this state where most of your day, much of your day, most of your responses are you just get anxious about a lot of things. He's saying, you don't have to do that. And, and then he teaches us how to do this. Now, <clears throat> this speaks to me <clears throat> because... When I look back on my life, there have been some difficult seasons where I've experienced some really intense anxiety. And I know many of you can relate to that. And I've, I've experienced anxiety so intense that I've had panic attacks many years ago. Terrifying. I didn't even know what it was until I was having it. Um, so I've experienced more uh, anxiety than you would imagine. I can remember several seasons in my life when I wrestled with anxiety. It was pretty much a continual state or you know, I just was anxious about too many things. When I was in charge of Terminex Pest Control here in Hawaii, uh, I was responsible for 10 locations, 250 employees. And let me tell you, that caused me a lot of anxiety, a lot of sleepless nights. And then when I started pastoring this church 22 years ago, I had no clue how to pastor or preach. I'd never done it before. I had no clue. Some of you guys are like, oh, you still have no clue how to pastor or preach. <clears throat> that wasn't funny. That's was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrestled with anxieties off and on, off and on when uh, having to lead this church through the pandemic and all the political and cultural division. Uh, when my marriage was on the rock several years ago on the brink of divorce, I had a lot of anxiety, a lot. Um, when my dad died suddenly, I wrestled with anxiety. Uh, and you know what happened is those anxieties stole so much of my joy of God's joy, like so much. I mean, so much. And I think many of you can relate. So let me ask you this. What causes you to be worried? What steals your joy? Is it your job at times? Is it your workload and deadlines? That can cause me stress. Uh, what causes you to stress? Paying bills? Um, holiday weight gain? How you look? Losing hair, uh, your insecurities. Uh, here's a big one that steals our joy and causes us some anxiety is we worry too much about what other people think. We just do. Oh, I hope I didn't say that wrong. Oh, oh man, I hope they didn't take that wrong. And oh, what did they mean by that? Oh, oh, oh. And we can just get really focused on that. How about strained relationships, people issues? I think, honestly, people issues... And people are one of the number one things that steal our joy. Would you agree with that? And so I can relate to all those worries that I just mentioned. And, and here's what our worries do. My worries reveal where my trust levels in God have lowered. In fact, take a look at this. You may want to screenshot this. What we worry about most reveals where we trust God least. In other words, what you worry about, what I worry about from time to time, it reveals an area in our life that we're not fully trusting God. So what do we do? Paul's going to teach us. He says this in the next part of the verse. He says, so don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, whenever you're worried, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then watch this. If you do this, he says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Meaning you have peace even though your outside world's kind of crazy. You have peace on the inside. He said that peace will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He says, if you want more peace, the peace of God, next time you're anxious, do this. Everybody say it with me all occasions. We need to pray first. First. See, prayer, here's what it does. It shifts our focus from, oh, what if? Oh, I'm, worried, I'm worried about that. I'm dreading this. It shifts our focus from that onto the one who can help us with what we're worried about, everybody. Amen. We pray first. So the next time you worry, pray first. Before you start the week, what do you do? You pray first. You come to church. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. Everybody who's here, all of our locations, everybody who's online, well done. You pray first first. And then what do you do? Then tomorrow morning before you take off, we're going to pray first. And then when you get that email that irritates you, what are you going to do? Pray. You're going to pray first. And then before you post that post on social media, you better not post. No, no you're going to pray first. And so here it is. 
I like to say it this way. Prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. And if we're just honest, sometimes prayer, and this is true of me too, is sometimes my last response. It, 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 it's my last response. It's not my first response. And, and so can I ask you, when you start to worry, is God the very first person you talk to? Or do you call a friend? Or do you go to your family member? That's what I do sometimes. Is he the first person you talk to? Or, or is there something else you try to do to calm your anxieties? Uh, sometimes we turn to other things before we turn to God when we're anxious, like... Uh, TV and media, uh, alcohol, drugs, weed, sex, porn, fill in the blank. For many of us, if we're just honest, and this is true of me sometimes too in my own life, is prayer is often our last resort instead of our first response. Isn't that right? But prayer should be our first response, not our last result. Not our last resort. And so that's why uh, we put together these pray first wrist bracelets that you received while you came in. And um, we're giving these to all of our youth. So all of the youth that ki in Kid Zone and in our high school, junior high ministries are all receiving these. And, and we are too. If you didn't get one, you can get one at guest services. And I want you to wear this during this series because it takes several weeks to develop a habit. And the idea is that before you, you go into that meeting, you pray first. Before you send that text, when you're like, I can't believe they just said that. You're going to pray first. Um, I, you know, this week I was working on this message and I'm like, man, I do not pray first enough. And so I'm so glad I got this because I'm going to learn how to pray first more. Before you make that purchase that's not in your budget, you're going to pray first. Pray before you pay. Pray first. Right? And so let's wear it through this series and develop the habit of praying first. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. But Dave... I've prayed about what I've worried about, and it didn't work. Because I prayed, but I was still freaking out. I was still anxious. You ever felt that way? I certainly have. Um, and so let's take a deeper look at this verse on anxiety. And I want you to see if you prayed the way that Paul instructs us to pray for God's peace. Here's what he says. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer, and say it with me, with petition and with thanksgiving present your request to God these are three ways to pray you don't see we don't just pray they're, they're like three specific ways to pray notice I highlighted them petition simply means you're just asking God for help and you know I I'm there's a lot of people like well I don't talk to God about that because he's busy listen if it's big enough to worry about it's big enough to pray about and so you just pray first. You ask God, God, I'm worried about this. I need your help. Help me. And then you pray with thanksgiving. This is the part we often miss when we're stressed out. We don't pray with thanksgiving because we think I've got nothing to thank God for right now. I'm worried. <laughs> and so we have to pray with thanksgiving. Now, I want to be really clear. It doesn't mean you go, God, thank you for the cancer. Right. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you thank God in the battle with cancer. God, thank you for this medical care. Thank you. Thank you for being with me always. Thank you for your power, your grace that is sufficient. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your strength to persevere. Thank you. You're going to help me get through what I'm going through. That's praying with gratitude. What this word means in the Greek, it's to develop an attitude of gratitude when you pray about your worries. So he's saying every time you worry... Pray with thanksgiving. And then you present your request. What does this mean? That means that you and I pray specifically. And now what we tend to do is we, pray, we tend to pray vague prayers. So if you're having problems at work, we say, God, help me at work. Well, that's pretty vague. But if you pray specifically, you go, God, can you help me with this jerk at work? God, can you help me with this email I got to write, this project, this deadline? God, I've been worried about my kids. God, I'm, I'm worried about my marriage. God, I'm worried about my loved one who's fighting for their life. And you just, you, you, you pray specifically. And I pray specifically, Lord. And you watch. You start praying this way. Then you will experience more of the peace of God. 
And so we put together some resources to help you pray more. And one is called our 21 Days of Prayer Guide. And, and this is to give you a prayer boost in this new year, to help you pray first. And these are all the different topics that you will pray through in 21 days. Plus, there's a little devotion on each of these different topics and some great scriptures. It literally takes you about two minutes to do this. And it can just springboard in drawing you closer to God. So I encourage you to join us for Pray First. Now, this is going to start not tomorrow, but a week from Monday. If you want to start now, you can. On January 16th, that's a week from tomorrow, we're going to start a three-day fast. And I'm asking you as, as one of your pastors that all of us participate in this fast. We'll talk more about this next week. It'll start Monday, sunrise, end Wednesday, sundown. And we're asking you to pick a level of commitment to do a biblical, to do a fast. A fast means you go without food. But we realize some of you can't do that for health reasons. And so you choose a level. And I would encourage you to choose a high level. But be thinking about what are you going to give up? Now, I don't want you to be like, hey, pastor, I'm giving up vegetables during the fast. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, like, like, what are you going to give up besides social media, besides, you know, dessert? Like, like we want you to, to draw close to God. Now, listen, there are some things that will not change in this new year that you've been praying about until you fast. The Bible just says some things don't change in our lives until we fast. So I, I want to challenge you to go all in. So how do you get those resources? Uh, use this QR code. It's right there. So we want to pray first, but, but catch this. That's not the only thing to do if you want God's peace and joy. Look at what Paul says. He says in the very next verse, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Instead of worrying, you got to shift your thinking off your worries and replace those worrisome thoughts with thoughts that are true and honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. And he says, and then a God of peace will be with you. So we have to shift our thinking, not just pray first. So let's focus on some thoughts that are true. I'll show you something that I found interesting this week. I want you to answer this question all of our locations. How often do your worries actually come true? <laughs> you ever thought about that? Like, how often do your worries come true? <clears throat> A lot, of times, a lot of times we worry because like, oh, what if I don't meet this deadline? Or what if, the, what if I, I never get married? Or what if, what if, da, 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 fill in the blank, right? Researchers at Penn State said that uh, our worries really don't come true very often. Uh, in this research, they did a study with, with lots of participants. And this is, this is the amount of worries that did not come true according to their research. They said 91% of the people in the in the <clears throat> survey pool, their worries never came true. In other words, the majority of your worries and mine never come true. And that is a true thought. God, why don't you think about that next time you worry? Now, I know what some of you thinking, but Dave, what about the other 9% that did come true? Right? And so here's what the research, what they discovered. The researchers discovered that the outcome of the 9% that came true was better than expected 75% of the time. In other words, what people worried about when they act, their worries actually came true, it was not as bad as they thought it was. So what's the point? You may want to take a screenshot of this. Most of our worries are false evidence appearing real. And I just want to talk about something from your spiritual enemy will present all kinds of thoughts in your mind that are fake news, false alarms. The next time you worry, you need to say, you know, you know I'm, no, I'm gonna pray first and I'm gonna think on what's true. And what's true is, is this probably isn't gonna happen. And even if it does, God's gonna help me through it. I was thinking back on the things I worried about this year, um, this week. <clears throat> um, I had work-related worries and stresses. I had some people issue worries. I had some health scares um, and other worries this year. And guess what? This is the truth. Only a handful of those worries came true. In other words, I wasted all of this time worrying about stuff that never came true. And the ones that did come true wasn't that bad. <laughs> And God was with me through it like he always is for you and me. 
I heard it said this way. If you worry about something and it happens, you've worried twice. If you worried about something and it doesn't happen, you worried in vain. Maybe this is why Jesus said this. So don't be anxious about what? Your future. Tomorrow. What's going to happen on Wednesday? Don't worry about that medical appointment. God will take care of you tomorrow too. I'm going to take care of you today. And he's going to take care of you that tomorrow too. So live one day at a time, Jesus says. God gave us 24 hour periods of time. And he says, stay in today. Today has enough trouble of its own. And I'm going to help you through that. And I want you to know, God is saying this to you right now. Some of you have been really anxious and worried. And what God is saying to you right now is he's saying this. He's saying, I'm going to take care of your tomorrow too. Let that sink in. The Lord is saying, I'm going to take care of your tomorrow too. So don't worry about it. Don't be anxious about it. Live for today. You know what happens when we worry about the future is we just miss the present. We go home and we're just all stressed out about what's coming up and we can miss these moments of blessings that are right before us. And it's happened to me too. So how do we do this? I want to talk a little bit about what's um, helped me over the years. Um, if you've been around church, you've probably heard about doing daily devotions. And for most people, they think that's just reading the Bible. Um, last week, we talked about giving God the first 15 minutes of your day before, somewhere in your day before you leave your house. And so what I try to do is I try to just start the day with five minutes in scripture or more. And I just, I just get into God's word. And I just read it. I read it at least a chapter. Usually it's more than a chapter. And I just, I'm just soaking my mind and heart with God's word. And then this is huge. Uh, I try to give God at least one song where I just, I just e either listen to the worship song or I listen and sing it. And I can't tell you how much that can change my attitude. How much I can feel God is more near than distant from just singing one song. Sometimes it's two or three songs. And by the end of the third song, I'm like, whoo, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then I pray. Now, a lot of people think prayers like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord. No, no, no. Listen, you know what prayer is? Just talk story with God. God, I'm stressed about this. God, I'm worried about that. And you just think in God's presence. And you think through your day and you just think with God. Like, like I am not always talking when I pray. I'm often thinking in his presence when I'm hanging with him. But I'm telling you, if you do this, you give God the first 15 minutes of your day, I'm telling you, it, you will experience more of God's presence, more of his peace, more of his power, more of his joy. That's why we're always talking about doing it. It's not a spiritual religious duty. I find that once I do this, it's a delight. And some mornings I don't want to do it. Oh, I don't got time for that. I feel like that. Or it's, oh, I just don't want to do that. I'm tired. But man, it's kind of like going to the gym. You know how you, when you go to the gym, when you're all pal working out, you're like, oh, I just feel better. It's the same with this. So I want to encourage you, do five, five, five throughout this series. Now we put the, we've put together just some, some things I want to encourage you to do. So we're launching this Come Back to Church Spiritual Growth Campaign, Joyful. And I want to challenge you to attend five Sunday services. So you're here again, everybody. Good job. And just come every week. You know, just make sure you get the five services because we're going to teach you from God's word. I'm telling you, there's some things that we're going to teach you. You're like, wow, I did not know that that's what I need to do to experience God's joy. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, was help, I was editing this small group resource. I'm like, wow, the content in here is so good. And I'm not saying I created it. I just said I edited it. It is solid. So attend the five Sunday services and then attend five small groups. And uh, we put together this free resource for you, which you can download. And it's just a great, great resource. It's free. And let me tell you, there's some things in this resource that me and Pastor TJ won't have time to teach you on Sundays. Uh, and it is so important that you get into a small group. Our small group semesters is starting this week. And I just, I, listen, I challenge you to get in a small group. And I know what some of you are thinking. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to get the book. Because I get it. I'm busy too. 
But can I tell you, if you just attend Sundays and you don't get in a small group and talk and learn from other people, honestly, you'll experience some joy by the end of the series, but you're not going to experience the joy and peace that God wants you to experience. So I encourage you to, to do that and then pray the 21 days of prayer. So you can just, you know, put your phone up to this QR code right now if you want. You can uh, download the resources. You can pick them up at guest services or you can go to our website. And then um, I want to encourage you if you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to go to somebody's small group. Why don't you come to my small group? Um, you can go to this QR code. It's going to be on Wednesday. It starts this Wednesday at 6. It's going to be at the church office in Kailua. It starts um, January 11th at 6 p.m. And I, I'd love for you to be in my group. It's five weeks. It'll be in about an hour and a half each week. And uh, would love to have you come check it out. And you know what, what you could do is maybe just come to the first one. See if it's a fit for you. Like, no pressure. If you're like, eh, this didn't benefit me at all, hey, don't come back. You don't have to do that. But I'd love to have you come. I'd love to get to know you more if we haven't met yet. So um, just go to this QR code or you can go to guest services and sign up to be a part of my group. All right, everybody? Okay. So <clears throat> I want to end with this story. So when I was in high school, I wanted to become a certified scuba diver. And so I took this scuba certification class and uh, part of the certification required that we go on several dives. So I remember the day we were doing our dives, so we were suited up in our scuba gear, and the first dive was 30 feet. And I'd never done it before, so I was like, oh, this is cool. And then the second dive was 60 feet down below the surface. And then the last two dives, they said, hey, listen, we're going to go to a, over 100 feet in depth in order to get your certification. And our scuba instructor said this, now, when we're down to 110 feet, he said, you cannot swim back up to the surface quickly. If you panic and you start to swim up, he said, you can get what's called the bends. And the bends uh, is, are, it's this decompression illness. And he said, if you just rush up to the, the surface of, of the water quickly and not slowly with us as a team, you will get severely sick, and he said, and you could actually die. I was like, oh. So honestly, I started getting anxious. I'm like, oh, what if I panic down there? <laughs> like, you guys, 110 feet down below the surface, that's a long ways down. So we're going down, and my heart's like. <laughs> and the instructor said before we went down, he said, listen, if you panic, you got to remember your training. And he said, and I want you to look me in the eyes. And I want you to remember, I am right there for you. And I'm going to help you. So just if you panic, you, you remember your training. And you put it into practice. And you look at me. And I will be right there for you. So we're down below the surface, 110 feet, bottom of the, 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 the floor. And I look up, and I'm like, oh, that is a long ways away. And I knew I cannot just swim quickly to the surface because I could get the bends. And so one of the students with me starts to freak out. They're like, and I'm like, and the instructor goes and grabs a student's arm and goes. And I'm panicking right behind the student and I'm like, And then he goes like this. He's all, like, calm down. You're going to be OK. And he's like, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. You OK? OK. Just breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. Keep, keep your eyes. No, no, keep your eyes here. Because they started looking around. And, no, no, keep your eyes on me. And I was right behind the person doing the same thing. I was all, <gasps> remember your training. Keep your eyes on your instructor. The student calmed down. I calmed down. And we had a blast down there. At first, our joy was being stolen, but we got it back. And we 
rose slowly to the surface so none of us got the bends. And I was thinking about that story this week and I just thought, that's what we need to do when we get worried and anxious. This is what Paul's saying. He's saying the next time we start to panic, we get worried and we feel like we're just deep below the surface and we're scared about what's ahead. We got to remember our training. We got to pray first. We got to pray first. We got to praise God to, to shift our focus off of our worries onto the one who can help us with our worries and sing songs. Ephesians 6 says, sing worship songs to be filled with the Holy Spirit, be filled with this God of peace, this God of joy. So, so instead of worrying, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna turn on worship music and I'm gonna focus on the one who can help me get through what I'm going through. And I'm gonna read God's word and, and, and I'm going to just fill my soul, my heart with his life-giving words and let him speak to me, speak to me. And then there's gonna be promises that I'm gonna hold on to with what I'm worried about, that he promises to do with what I'm going through. And I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray first. I'm gonna pray first. And I'm gonna not just pray vaguely, I'm gonna pray specifically, and I'm gonna pray with thanksgiving. I'm gonna remember that training. And all of these things that we're challenging you to do, you know what they do? They turn your eyes on your instructor. And his name is Jesus Christ. And some of you, you've been anxious and you need to hear this. What God is saying to you is this, I know you've been worried, but I am with you. So it's okay. Remember your training. I'm with you. It's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I got you. I will never leave you or forsake you. My grace is sufficient. I've helped you throughout your life. I'm going to do it again because that's who I am, God says. And you're going to experience this year. If you do these things, you're going to experience more of my peace and my joy. But I got you. You're in the palm of my hand, God is saying. Aren't you glad for this God we serve, Jesus? If you would bow your heads with me. All of our locations, if you would just bow your heads. That's just a, an act of humility. And if you close your eyes, it kind of just helps us from being distracted. And as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, in a few moments after I'm done praying, we're actually going to sing a praise song a worship song. So I want to ask everybody here to remain seated when I'm done praying. At all of our locations online, please remain online uh, because I'm telling you, I think God during this next worship song, I think he's going to fill you with more of his joy and peace. That's what Ephesians says. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray for these wonderful people of New Hope. God, you know the stress, the worries, the anxieties that each of us wrestle with, and you know where we hurt and where we feel heaviness and at times despair. And right now, Jesus, I speak to the spirit of heaviness and I rebuke you, you spirit of anxiety, you spirit of stress and nervousness and depression and fear and worry. You break off your power on God's people right now. And Lord, I pray for heaven to open up for each of us. Lord, where you are pouring out joy in the weeks ahead and your peace into our hearts and our minds, regardless of our circumstances, pour your joy, God, and your hope more into our lives. And God, help us to make that choice to rejoice in the Lord, to always be joyful, to choose joy even when we don't feel like it. Thank you that you're going to teach us how to do that. And God, help us to pray first throughout our days. I ask you to move powerfully, Lord, over the 21 days of prayer and the three-day fast so that we are never the same. And help us to go all in for this series, God, so we can learn and practice how to have more joy throughout this year and really ultimately to draw us closer to you. Help us keep coming back to church, God, and lead us into a joy-filled small group That'll fill us with more of your presence. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, if you've been feeling distant from God over the holidays, or maybe you've, you've never had a relationship with God, or you've just kind of drifted from him, in a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. We're all going to pray it. 
And this prayer is to, to begin a relationship with God or renew your commitment to him. And so if you've never begun a relationship with God, I want you to pray this prayer. And uh, if you've drifted, you can renew your commitment. I find that renewing my commitment to God is a daily choice. So at all of our locations, church family, let's pray this prayer together. And, and if you want to begin a relationship with God or renew it, just pray this for the first time. Just say these words from your heart. Just say, Jesus Christ, I turn from my sins. I turn to you. Please forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for the times I lack trust. I receive your forgiveness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want you to be my life leader, my Lord and Savior, my Heavenly Father and friend. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen, amen. So, at all locations, you can stand, but please remain standing. We're going to sing a worship song. And so if you would stand, we're going to sing this praise song. And if you've been worried about something, I want to encourage you to just throw yourself into this song. The Bible says make a sacrifice of praise. What does that mean? That means at times if you don't feel like worshiping, you make a sacrifice and you still do it even if you don't feel like it. But I really believe that during this song, if you throw your heart into it, I, I really believe that you're going to experience more of God's peace. Some of you may even feel some tears. No shame. Let the tears flow. That's just God's, that's Jesus ministering to you. And just let him be filled into your heart, okay? So we're going to sing this song, then I'll come back up. Let's just give our hearts and surrender to the Lord. And let's be still. Lord, have your way.
be still and know that my fear is gone here in your presence a new sun rises to heaven this heart and soul be still Hey, thank you for watching today. I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. I encourage you to share this video with a friend. And if you're blessed by this message, you can support God's work by clicking the Give button on the right or on our New Hope Windward website. Don't forget, you can join us live every Sunday online or at one of our New Hope Windward locations. And once again, thank you so much for watching. May God bless you.